There's a phrase on the inside I can't keep to myself. Hey, 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 good morning and welcome to Financial Confidence God's Way, where we're on fire this morning, guys. Today's topic, we're going to be talking about uh, what are the budgeting mistakes you're making as you prepare to invest? Yes, yes. What are those budget mistakes you are making as you prepare to invest? But before we get started, let me remind you of our guiding principle for the show. That is Matthew 6 and 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Yes, I love that. We always put God first, and our motto is faith, family, and finances. We learn how to make our money, keep our money, and grow our money. And in doing that, we also must pray over our money so that we are continuing to build the kingdom of God. So I ask that you commit this prayer to memory and you'll see your life change as you're intentional, as you focus and move forward in building the kingdom. So let us bow. Lord, help me value the things in this world that's really valuable. That's my relationship with you, my life and my family. Help make me a responsible steward of your financial resources and let us trust your holy word for the eternal glory of your son Jesus. In his name we pray, amen. So guys, yes, today's conversation is one of those budgeting mistakes that we're making. But before we get into that, I wanted to share this quote with you um, that I thought would be very important as we go through and we talk about all of these principles. We talk about our finances from a biblical standpoint, but I also wanted to share this with you. And it's a quote from uh, Tony Robbins and it reads, life is a gift. And it offers us the privilege, the opportunity, and responsibility to give something back by becoming more. And that's Mr. Tony Robbins. And, and the reason that I teach and I share these biblical principles around our finances, guys, is because we are called to give and do more. We're not called to be in poverty and lack. We're not called to be broke, busted, and disgusted. We're not called to these things. We're called to have life and have it more abundantly. And we're called to build the kingdom of God. So we got to get our money right. We got to do things uh, right in our finances so that we're able to do what we're called to do. We got to stay on it. So I'm held accountable guys to helping you out and you're held accountable to doing the things that you know are right. Once you get educated, once you know we are called to do better, so it's time for us to do better. So today's topic, let's get started. I have my notes for y'all guys. This is awesome. This is so good. What are those budgeting mistakes that we need to avoid that we are dealing with on a regular basis that will help us to get to our next so that we can invest our monies? Why? Because we want to make our money, keep our money, grow our money. That's the entire point, guys so that we can do what we're called to do as far as leaving generational wealth. We got to get back to the basics. So in doing that and getting back to the basics, what are the things that we need to do? Now you tell me if this is you or not, and you think about it, I want you to reflect and, and just share and think about it for yourself, first of all, but then share this with someone else because the goal is hope. We help one person every day, at least one person. And each, if each of us who are listening to the show, you share the information out and you help someone else out, you can imagine the impact as you begin to pay it forward. So number one, what one of those things, and you'll find yourself in one of these mistakes if you don't find yourself in all of them. The number one thing I wanna say, and this is for the person who has set up your budget, right? You went through the process, you know your numbers, you've written out that budget, but you never went back to look at it. You never took the time to go back and revisit the budget to say uh, whether or not you are on track. So you stop tracking your spending, you um, basically, you stop checking on your progress. And what I say guys here is that having a budget is your plan, right? Having that budget in place is your plan. Just like for me, I'm a speaker and an author and I travel to different destinations across the world. 
right? And in those travels, and if, I, if I'm driving somewhere, the first thing that I do is I get in my car and I turn on the navigation, plug in the address for where I'm going, right? That signal is sent up to the satellites in the sky. Those signals come back to Earth, map out a plan for me that not only tells me how to get to my destination, but it also tells me how long it will take me to get to my destination. See guys, your budget should be the same thing for you. Your budget coupled with your goals are what are going to tell you where you're going, how you're gonna get there, and how long it's going to take you. So we have to identify that fact. Guys, make the budget, but go back and revisit. See if you're on track or not, right? Figure out what it is that you need to do differently and do it, okay? Maybe that's not you. Maybe you haven't started a budget, right? Maybe you're doing this. This number two things. You're only budgeting for your bills. Who does that, right? Why are you only budgeting for your bills? And guys, I'm not pointing any fingers. I'm sharing these things with you because I've been there and I've done that, right? I've done all of these things before. There was a time in my life where I only budgeted for my bills. And that's a stressful and overwhelming place to live because as soon as your check comes in, the first thing you're doing is it's going right back out the door. It's going right out the door because now you're sending out and paying for all of these other expenses. So you have to know where all of your money it's going. Don't just budget for your bills because there are other things that happen in your life. You like to go out to eat. You like to travel. You like to do different things. So we have to account for all of these different moving pieces inside of our budget. So don't only budget for your bills, guys. Take into account everything. And I hate to borrow from this, but there's an app called Every Dollar. That's essentially exactly what you need to be do, accounting for every single dollar in that budget once you account for every single dollar, guys, then it becomes easier to now identify funds that are available for investing. See, that's the end game. We have to identify those funds. I'm sorry, guys, that's my dad calling in. We have to identify those funds. I'm serious, life happens. I mean, it is what it is, right? We have to identify those funds um, that we have coming in and going out all the way around, not just budgeting for our bills, all right? So the number two thing, the, the number three, I'm sorry, the number three thing that we do, it's another budgeting mistake we make, is we budget according to someone else's spending habits. <sighs> right? Might wanna woost off for a minute right there because I think I just threw a brick at you. Um, it, but I want you to take these bricks and build a foundation with them, build a financial foundation, right? So I need you to understand, guys, that it's not about keeping up with the Joneses. It's about you and your budget. You have to make sure that you are spending based upon your current lifestyle. And the beauty of it is it will not remain the same if you do this things. Your current lifestyle will not remain the same because what you'll now be able to do once you identify what it is you're able to spend and the certain percentages that you should be spending things in then eventually your life starts to change your bank account starts to change you start having more zeros and more commas in your bank accounts instead of negatives uh, showing up on the on the front side all right so figuring out how do you now budget for your life don't try to keep up with the Joneses. For example, your home should only represent 30% of your income. I dare you to go in and look at your income and see how much, what is that percentage of your home that you're currently living in that's taking a larger percentage of your income that's coming into your home. See, these are things that no one taught us in regards to managing our funds. And if we manage our funds appropriately, guys, we'll find that it's so much easier for us to be able to give, to tithe, to provide to other charities, to support things that we want to support, that, we're, that we are passionate about, that we uh, other opportunities we want to give to and support. See, all of those things become possible when we learn 
to manage appropriately, how to make our money, keep our money and grow our money. That's the name of the game. That's the conversation that we're having today as we move forward. And the number, I think I'm on number five. If I'm messing up these numbers, guys, just let me uh, just count it to <laughs> my brain, not to my heart, because I actually lost track. I was just taking notes and just talking to you and sharing the information, because I think it is so good that we now become educated in the way that we should as far as our finances are concerned. And another uh, mistake that we make, guys, is we always say, that we are simply going to accept our spending as is, right? I'm just going to accept it as is. I'm just going to go out here and spend my money all willy-nilly, if you will. We're not taking into an account, here it is, every dollar. See, there's a very different mindset shift that has to happen when you recognize the fact that, hey, I need to start doing things differently because I am not of this, uh, I am not called to be in poverty. I am not called to be in lack. I am called to be a, have an abundant life. So how do we now align with those things? And guys, yes, this is financial confidence that we're talking about here, but also finances, your money touches so many different decisions in your life, right? So once we learn and, and recognize that fact, I guarantee you, you'll start to see other areas of your life improve. Try it and see. If I'm wrong, call me and let me know. That's fine. If I'm right, call me and let me know that too. Guys, it's about financial confidence in us doing the things that we need to do that we have been allotted in our lives. See, God has provided all of these things for us, and we are to be good stewards of those finances, but how can we be good stewards if we're making these budgeting mistakes that I'm sharing with you? If we're not making our money, keeping our money and growing our money, guys, we are not living according to the purpose for which we should be building generational wealth. So it's time out for play play. It's time for us to do things the right way. Welcome back. So this segment of the show is where we will address questions that we have received from our listeners and or our viewers. And if you have questions that you would like for me to share or answer on the show, we'll make sure to get to those. Miss L. Perry actually wanted us to have a conversation around what is the difference between good debt and bad debt. And I think that this is a very important conversation that we need to have to understand, even from a biblical standpoint, it says to owe no man nothing except to love. That's what we're called to do. I owe you love. I shouldn't owe you anything. So what's the difference between good debt and bad debt? This is the simple, the short and simple, the skinny, if you will, of this conversation between good debt and bad debt. Good debt is debt that could potentially, that is going to make you money, right, in the future, and it will continue to make you money. Bad debt takes money out of your pocket in the immediate, but it also takes money out of your pockets in the future. Think about it this way. You buy shoes, purse, a car, a house, whatever, right? Maybe you won't put a, car, a house on a credit card, but let's just say maybe you got it like that you put these things on a credit card then what happens right put those shoes that purse or that car put those things on there more than likely you are going to pay three times the value of that item if you are carrying the balance on that credit card see that now turns into bad debt right that is bad debt because you're paying one hundred, one thousand, ten thousand dollars for it today, but in paying it back, you're paying three hundred, thirty thousand, so on and so forth, more than what the initial item cost. 
So that is bad debt. Your good debt is something now that you can now leverage, right? To get a return on that investment, right? So for example, if you are purchasing a home that you're using for a rental property, that rental property is going to now make you money. Or you go to college and you're getting a degree for something that you want to do in your career, right? Then that is going to make you more money than it costs you to acquire that particular asset. So make sure that you identify the difference between your good debt and your bad debt. Make sure you are getting rid of all of your bad debt. Be like Dave Ramsey says, gazelle intense, getting rid of that bad debt, but get that good debt going guys so that it can help you to build generational wealth. That's what we're called to do. I'm Lynn Demons, America's number one financial rebound coach guys. And I thank you so much for joining us here for the show. Uh, come on over, share any questions, comments, or concerns you have with me on Facebook. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Demons Speak. Thank you so much for joining us here at WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network for Financial Confidence, God's Way.